Hey, thanks for tuning in to Larger Curves today. Make sure you smash that like button and smash that subscribe button. I really appreciate you taking a minute to pop in. This video is on none other than the wonderful Ebony K. Williams Esquire of Real Housewives of New York. Yes, the one and only first ever black melanated queen of New York has arrived, Ebony K. Williams Esquire. As you know from my last video, may or may not, um, know that she took a hiatus from social media following these last two episodes of Real Housewives of New York because the topic is so thick she decided that she was gonna have to allow us as viewers to have the conversations these hard conversations because she's already done the heavy lifting getting the Karens of New York to see their bias and recognize their selves in their selves and their actions and treatment of black women in general needed to be shown and she's done the heavy lifting she's held up the mirror and now it's up to us She's given us an opportunity to discuss it amongst ourselves. This is her first interview on social media. She did an interview last night on Watch What Happens Live. And she said a couple of things that, but she's gonna go into way more detail with the gossip goddess herself, Nina Parker. Shout out for a wonderful interview on the Bravo Instagram live feed over there from Nina Parker and Ebony K. Williams. Let's listen to what she has to say. So strange to be uh, on the on the Bravo. Uh, <laughs> see everybody. There she goes. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Ebony! How are you, beautiful? Hey, queen. I'm lovely. How are you? You look great. You look You look beautiful in that tent. Honey, that's, um, you're giving me marigold vibes. Am I? I? Yes. yes. You know, from my collection, girl. <laughs> okay, listen. You know I feel a way about that. That is lit, honey. No, like, I'm normalizing feeling a way that's positive. Feeling yeah. a way in a good way. I was yes. like, oh, no. No. <laughs> Are you kidding me? That's so. I was texting actually with Megan McCain the other day, and she's like, "I bought all, I bought all the inventory. Yeah, she's like, I, I bought. I actually bought everything in every size. I'm waiting on yes. the next. We're, we're, she's waiting on the next drop. It's like fifty. Yes, child, we're doing we're waiting it every on the month for, for my plus size ladies. So we are definitely, you know, you know how it is on TV. Like you gotta yeah. have you, you wear it once and it's gone. So oh, so actually. That's something else I'm normalizing. Oh, you wear it once and it's gone. Cause I'm saying, I'm normalizing wearing the same shit y'all see on the Instagram over and over and over again. Cause I bought it. Okay. Right, it's yours. It is yours. <laughs> I, I don't have time for that. The way my FICO score is set up now, I have to be respectful. <laughs> I mean, listen, you are saying nothing but a word. Yeah, that's absolutely true. For, for, for people who are coming in, everybody's kind of coming in right now. You know, obviously uh, we are speaking yeah. with Ebony Williams. Ebony which we, you know, I absolutely love you on the show. I am Nina Parker, television host of E! with E's Nightly Pop. And, you know, we basically wanted to have a conversation on this live uh, just to kind of, I don't know, I guess I just want to do a check-in. Um, you know, I, I saw the episode last night. It was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot. It was a lot for me to process in a, in a, in a bunch of different ways. So I wanted to talk to you about some of this because, you know, I feel a way about what happened on the show, but I also feel a way about what's happening on social media, um, you know, and I just, we just have to talk about this because I'm just going to tell you right now, I'm here for all things Ebony and I'm not here. I, I don't, I don't play them games with the with people, you know, trying to come for you. And it's, you are living out on this show what a lot of black women have to live out every day. Yes and we're seeing the uncomfortability because sometimes when you're in it when you have these uncomfortable conversations with people you go about your day you have an uncomfortable conversation maybe you tell your girlfriend when right. you get home like right. this happened at work you guys right. have you know a little drink and then you go about your day but to see it play back has to be a little triggering i can imagine 
It's exactly that, Nina. It's and and I want to be so clear here. Um, two things. Number one, I, as you know, Nina, have, am still actually on my social media hiatus. I had to literally log into the app to do this um, incredible conversation I know, I with you. I was like, okay, is Ebony gonna be able to log in, child? Oh, okay. Okay, for radical transparency, girl. I was fr freaking out because I forgot my password. I was like, oh shit. What is this Instagram password? And child I was trying to text my, but I, God is good and we got it done. Yes. Um, and after this important combo that we're gonna have, sis, I'm gonna actually log back out. Um, okay. And and I continue to honor my peace uh, yeah. in the spirit of Naomi Osaka and so many others uh, who choose yeah. themselves, right, in these moments of uh, trauma and pain. Uh, but I want to make the point that what I am going through on this platform yeah. is exactly what you said, Nina. It is so the same exact thing that black and brown women and, and men and non-binaries, um, frankly, people in any marginalized community right. are dealing with every damn day. Yeah. Um, so everybody listening to this dialogue know that not for one second do I think this is like unique to me as a housewife right, right. or unique to me as someone in the public yeah. eye. This ain't new, This nothing about this shit is new to me either, Nina. Right. I, this, the yeah, same, I was just gonna say the same, energy that you see playing out on yeah. these episodes of Roni is the same energy from UNC Chapel Hill. It's the same energy from my um, yep. existence in pageantry. Uh, it, it was my same experience as a young attorney um, yeah. in the space. So shout out to everybody mm. who is having to feel off those microaggressions. And even now, every day. You know, yeah. I'm gonna just call this out early yeah. and then we're, we're gonna leave it alone. But even now as we're having this conversation on live, there are people in the comments, someone just said, oh, I thought I was watching Bravo, not BET. Oh. And, and and just make sure, you know, your, your ad is on there and we can see you. And 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 so can your employer. So just remember that when you, when you leave in these reckless comments, because let's try to have this be a respectful space. I feel like people don't have to agree with you, but At let's all. be respectful. Yeah. And to even see two black women having a conversation on Bravo's account, is bringing in racist comments. So that alone should let people who are watching, who are like, oh, this isn't about race, this isn't about this. Just literally two women, two black women on Bravo's account have created people saying comments like that. And that is what we're talking about. That is what we're talking about that we deal with on a daily basis. That we we are not, we are being told we are not supposed to be in these spaces. And if we are, we should be lucky. And I feel like, you know, we gotta talk about that because I really, didn't like what I saw and I, you know I, I just it was very difficult. was it triggering for you you see I, if, I'm feeling and I, I receive and I hold space for you in this moment Nina too and um I just again full transparency I made a request to the network to be in conversation with you specifically I right appreciate that. I um of course this may lead for two reasons number one uh, I believe in black excellence and you, my sister, um, I watch you and I've watched your career evolve over many years now. Um, and to see the level of entertainment journalism and cultural work that you do on every platform I've ever seen you on uh, gave me the confidence and trust to be in this conversation with you specifically. Thank um, you. And I want to acknowledge- Thank you for trusting me with that. I want to acknowledge that, Nina, because it's important. Um, and it's also important that as black women, we reject notions of tokenism, mm. right? That Absolutely. say only one of us is permitted to be in the space at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, because one thing that I say often, my sister is not mm. my competition, she's my protection. Absolutely. And what more um, tangible example of that than this moment, right? Where I call upon my sister, who shares space at this network with me to stand in the gap alongside yeah. me to, to facilitate yeah. this important dialogue. So thank you. Thank you. And this is what's so crazy about being a black woman in a space mm. where there's not a lot of us, mm -hmm. is that there's an instant kinship because Ebony and I have never met face to face. Nope. Yet we started following each other on social media and it was instant support and love because you go through these experiences and you know what it feels like. Mm -hmm. So I instantly knew you were gonna need to be lifted up before I even watched the show. I was like, yeah. oh, Ebony got cast? Okay, not a problem. We're gonna, we gonna, we gonna be there for her while this airs. Because I know, you know, I, I, I host at E and that's mm -hmm. a very, you know, the audience is not majority black. No. And there are comments that come in on for, with our network 
about things that have nothing to do with the topic, but solely about my actions or my reaction to something. Yeah. Right. Or if I'm with a white counterpart, it's, um, oh, you're, you're aggressive on air. So when I saw you being called angry mm -hmm. after your uh, your friend Leah, mm -hmm. had, let's talk about Le Leah is your friend, and mm -hmm. she had she was going through something, and and she, and, and base, let's just be clear, everybody on Real Housewives has a meltdown. Mm -hmm. They go through things, they mm -hmm. yell, they scream. That that is what happens on Housewives. Where not, none of us, uh, you know, think there are going to be these calm discussions every episode. It, right. it was shocking to me that you were called angry by Luann. Um, following the outburst that Leah had. And mm -hmm. they were more, it seemed like they were concerned about her mental health. And they were like, oh, you know, it was yeah. almost like, you know, placated, but with you, it was just instant, like, you're too loud. The ears, my ears hurt from Ramona. And, you know, it was it was all, it, I've never wanted to be somewhere so bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, I was like, let's... I need to go ahead and go to these cups. <laughs> So let's unpack a few of the things you just broke down, Nina. Yeah. A couple things there, right? The first was the double standard, right? That clearly existed. The goalposts yeah. moving in real time for what is considered angry and or acceptable behavior and what is not. As you say, my dear friend Leah, and as I said in last night's episode, to the women, to their faces, because you know, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm many things, I'm not a fake bitch. So That's whatever right. I say, whatever I say in interview confessional, whatever I say on social or it is whatever I say in press interviews, these women have already heard this shit straight from me to their faces, yes. to be clear. So Leah cussed them all out, called everybody hoes, screamed and ran <coughs> off into the into the distance. Yes. Got it. Got it. Cool. So when we're sitting in Ramona's yeah. living room last evening's episode and we're uh, coming with good energy and intention to get to resolution as a group of women. And I credit everybody for showing up in the space in that way. I made that point to the women. Did y'all see how y'all did that? To, it, to show that this is not just some random black hysteria, right? Right. This is not some random person trying to gotcha on uh, TV. Right. All right, that's not even who I am, Nina, okay? What I'm trying to show you with evidence, because that's my legal training, right? Is do you see how you treated and made space for this woman's grief um, and frustration and reaction in a way you never did for me. Mm -hmm. um, because she got to, to, to go away into the distance and I was not only called angry, ultimately I was asked to leave Luann's home. Right. And when I made that point, Nina, my castmate Ramona sat next to me and said, well, she's getting a pass because her grandmother is dying. Mm -hmm. And I, I receive the compassion that is meant there. Right. But then I make the point, Ramona, so is mine. Yes. Sis, Sorry. so is mine. And y'all know that because I just opened my heart to y'all not 24 hours ago and expressed to you my pain, not just my grandmother dying, one of my only two family members in the world. Yeah. So just because my grief is not being demonstrated in the same way Leah's is, y'all know I'm also grieving. And I am not afforded that yeah. same right to grieve and compassion and have an experience and 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 instead of in that moment in real time Ramona saying damn you you know what Ev you're right um I didn't get that and I haven't gotten it to this day and that leads me Nina to to, to consider something deeper is going on here mm -hmm. which is, is is a little bit of a probably subconscious yeah. lack of awareness yeah. to my full humanity as a woman too a woman who is also grieving, a woman who is also going through, and a woman who is deeply uh, hurt. Hurt mm -hmm. by the loss of my grandmother, hurt also by the fact that I'm in y'all's space, very much on your turf, very vulnerable, right? Mm -hmm. And all I was doing was making a point. And because you didn't want to hear it, Luann, you called me angry. And Ramona, because you didn't want to hear it, although not five minutes ago, after Leah's cuss out, storm out, yeah. Ramona, you stood your ass up and started <laughs> yeah. pounding on the table, talking about, I don't like D and C. <laughs> got it, yeah. cool, got it. But your ears were okay then. Right. It was only when I started to articulate, and I think, you know, I'm a broadcaster, so you understand this, sis. We are broadcasters. Yeah. Our voices are loud. They are built to project. Yes. So what I consider speaking in a in a room tone may right. be 
loud to you, but please believe I'm not yelling. So I'm not known angry. They yelling. They would have. That, that part right there. So, uh, <laughs> so all of that tells me that has to be called out as what it is, which is white yeah. fragility, right? Yeah. And and I saw, you know, I'm not on social, but you know, I have sores, I have friends, I have people yeah. that are feeling. People seem to be really triggered by the use of that term, Nina. And yes. I just want to, on this live, take just a quick minute to debrief what it is for those who are not familiar with too. the term. There are people yeah. in the comments that, that may not know what that is or people who will be watching this later. And I would love for you to just explain what that means and what it meant to you in that moment. Indeed. Um, number one, what it's not. It is not a racial slur. It is not a phrase meant to be derogatory to white people or white women at all. It is in fact an academic term. White fragility is an academic sociological term constructed by none other than a white woman herself by the name of Robin D'Angelo. And she wrote a book called White Fragility. And in it, it unpacks um, the, a, a societal dynamic wherein which white people uh, tend to have a visceral reaction of hesitation, rejection, and uh, shutting down of conversation that they are uncomfortable with, particularly, and, and Robin D'Angelo chose to do this in her defining of white fragility, particularly when it relates to black issues and black voices and black experiences. So it's basically in short, white fragility, the knee jerk reaction to shut down black experience. Yeah. Um, that's what and it I think is. if people understood that, maybe there wouldn't be so much offense to it, but I feel like the shutting down in response to the definition is in itself white fragility. And yes. I, I think, you know, people have to kind of under, you know, it's just, it's it's so ironic that we're seeing that. Um, I have to talk about, ask you about, yeah. this all really started with Luann to me, what I saw as kind of, you know, being petty and talking about class and education. Mm -hmm. Let me say this, and I don't care, people could take it how they want to take it. Mm -hmm. You guys had this conversation about class. Now, I am not here to judge who's classy, who's trashy. Right. But you were not arrested on, on the DUI. You did not try to strike a police officer. You were not falling into bushes. So if we're talking about class, I'm not quite sure Luann was the right person to be having that conversation with the table, considering what she's been through, let alone judging people's educational status. So I'm I'm confused on where why she was so upset when you said, yeah. listen, this is my education. Right. Never once did I hear you say, I you know, am smarter than you. I heard you say more educated and that's just paper to paper. And the only reason, thank you for that, Nina, that point of clarification, because it's very important that we're very specific here. This is maybe where people have, to, I invite people to consider yeah. that as a new housewife with a very different experience and professional background, than my castmates. Y'all gotta remember, I'm a classically trained litigator. That's not a, a flex. That, in this moment, I don't mean it as a flex. Now, I, I might I, at a different time, <laughs> not right now. At yeah. this moment, I say that to say that I only deal in fact and I deal in the precision of word choice, okay? Yeah. So the only reason that any of this came to light was because Luann and Ramona, I felt when Luann said, it's not about class, it's about education, they weren't even talking about me neither. Remember, they were talking about Leah. Yeah. They were talking about Leah's choice to use words that they felt were vulgar or mm -hmm. unladylike. Mm -hmm. And they proceeded to do that after she left. Yeah. I felt that that was shaming a woman who is at this point not here to defend herself. So I'm gonna step right. into the gap the same way I stepped into the gap on the sprinter when Luann was shaming Sonia Morgan mm -hmm. about her sexual freedom as a woman and calling yeah. her a one night stand and only good for sex and small brain all this bullshit. That's y'all gotta understand that's I'm a natural advocate. Okay. And if it yeah. had been Luann being talked about like a dog, I would have stood up for her ass yeah. too. Okay. So I'm just for what's right. So when they were talking about Leah in this very derogatory way and then Luann made an equivalency they said, oh, well, the reason she speaks so crassly mm -hmm. is because it, it, yeah. it's about education, implying that Leah used those terms because she had a lack of education. So now I have to stand in and be a real life example, Nina, to say, well, I use those same words. Mm -hmm. And I also use SAT words and LSAT words and any other fucking word I want to use because I've earned the right. 
Okay. Yes. And I happen to have the most formal education. And what I said was, I have the most education at the table. Uh-huh. And that's an unequivocal, unimpeachable fact. I never said, nor would I ever, would I ever say or even think I am smarter, more intelligent, or capable of anything. Because I don't even know these women at that point yeah. to say such a thing. I'm simply saying, don't make a false equivalency around education yeah. and the ability to be sexually free. Right. And I, I said that on my way out of Lou's house. I said, you're shaming a woman who is yep. sexually free, meaning Leah, and you're using education to do it, and it's trash, and I stand by that today. Let me ask you this. Do you think, Luann, when you made your response, which to me is putting yourself, you're basically putting yourself in Leah's position and saying, this won't have nothing to do with education because I've used those words. And by the way, right? I, last season, somebody pooped on the floor. Like, let's be clear. Like, the standards of class are relative, okay? So, yeah. he, Leah talking about sexual things, so what? Like, you know, so and my that's, question- And that's her is, frustration, is their hypocrisy, Leah. Yeah, it's a, it's, mm-hmm. it's a clear hypocrisy, and, and clearly people are blind to it on the cast, but when you responded the way you did, mm-hmm. do you think, and I'm gonna just ask you straight up, do you think Lulu Ann got offended that a black woman had more education than her? and was not afraid to say it. That is the second part. I think what really viscerally offended her sensibilities um, is that she, I was not only a black woman who has obtained more education than her and any of the women at the table, I had the audacity mm. to say it and say it in her home. Because for me, this is it, Lee, uh, Nina. It doesn't change if I'm in Luann's house, the white house, the green house, my JD stands. Mm. And the fact that I had the audacity to say it to her and say it very matter of fact, yes. I think felt very um, threatening. And, and if we're gonna really talk candidly, I think she felt I was out of my place. That's what I think. Absolutely. That's that's the feeling that I got when I watched. Mm-hmm. I had to watch it twice mm-hmm. because I, I was just, I wanted to make sure I saw what I saw. And mm-hmm. I wanted I wanted to watch it in the space of not being connected. And then I also mm-hmm. wanted to watch it in the space of, you know, it triggering me and things that I had seen in the past. Both ways, it seemed the same. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I was trying yeah. to rationalize why she got so offended. Um, and, mm-hmm. and because you never once said anything in that sense, um, as far as her being uneducated. And, and in fact, in the argument, you doubled down on how you were, you know, proud of the fact that she had the education she did in nursing so absolutely I, you know it really confused me she she got as offended to me with you that she did when they were talking about tom cheating like it was it was visceral to me it was visceral that's the word it was it was a visceral reaction um it erupted a, a level of kind of righteous indignation um mm-hmm. from her that i hadn't seen and, and if i had to speculate I'm not sure all of this will be addressed um, even further at the reunion because I've not spoken to Lou yet. Um, mm-hmm. as, you, as you heard me mention on Watch What Happens Live last night. Uh, but I do anticipate on speaking to Lou. I don't have a problem with Lou Ann. Yeah. I don't even have a problem with Ramona. Mm-hmm. But I will have to call the thing a thing, right? Yeah. And, and that's going to inside reaction. Um, yeah. But as it relates to Lou Ann, I think some of this energy between she and I started in the sprinter. Right? Mm. When I, again, kind of had that audacity mm. to be new to this group, um, newly forming relationships with each of the women, and had the audacity to kind of interject there where yeah. I felt that she was really uh, taking advantage of an already vulnerable, broken down, broken hearted Sonia Tremont Morgan. Yeah. Um, just not on my watch. Of yes, right. and, and I, I, I didn't well, yeah. really think about it. You know, I've always it, Sonia has done a really good job of making things a joke. But when I watched last night's episode and they showed all those flashbacks of how she's spoken to, mm-hmm. and you come in and this, there's just a way black women lift you up that nobody else can do it. And I, you know, yes, we there's just a, a way. And the way you lifted her up, yeah. you know, it was emotional to see because. She even said in her interview that she, you were helping give, make her feel like she had value. That when she's yeah. around these women, she does not feel value. I could, could, could tear up. Um, and even last night watching 
when she kind of made space for me right after the circle conversation and she just kind of held my hands and I held hers and she's just like you know it's kind of time for us white ladies to do a little bit better by our sisters uh, you know and, and, that's and I want it sometimes that's that's it it's no magic words I don't need a translator I don't need you to give white people an assignment right. I just need you to sit in the space um, with 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 an open heart and an open mind and the ability to listen and Sonia yeah. does that remarkably throughout the season. This is yeah. not going to be the first time y'all see her show up with that energy, and I really think Sonia and I to be a little corny here. We started to fall in love with each other a little bit during mm. this Hamptons trip. Seriously, because I saw her, she in turn saw me. Yes. And then it's like once you and another woman, you know this, Nina. It's, it's like you said, yeah. we saw each other before we yeah. saw each other. Which is like, yes, yes. gives me chills, right? Yes. Sonia and I sat in space and saw one another. And throughout this season, we really stand in the gap for one another's emotional needs. Because uh-huh. it, it, it transcends race. Because as you see at the end of the season, I'm like, you know, I don't know her like that. But this woman needs some love in her life. I can yeah. just feel, I can feel it spiritually. Yeah. And um, we, we, we go about that journey of trying to find Sonia some love. And you'll just have to watch to see if she finds it. I, I, I love that. It, I someone on Twitter last night said yeah. it was a friendship they didn't know they needed to have and to, to see you guys um, evolve that way you've made me see her in a new light and I think sometimes that happens you see people interact She, you're taking her out of the depth that we're used to seeing her one note because that's what she's around she's around people just like her well, we mm-hmm. and that's a, the issue I had with Real Housewives of New York it was my favorite franchise Yeah. so New York was my number one uh, for years, but mm-hmm. it started to feel like, man, you don't see yourself echoed in this at all. And so I was so excited to to see you come on. And then I, immediately I kind of yeah. felt like, oh boy, I, I know what she's in for because yeah. these are women who really are at the pinnacle of, of getting the benefits of white privilege. And yeah. and I want to ask you a question and you don't have mm-hmm. to answer. Do okay. you think Luann is racist? I don't think Luann is racist, and I don't say that to give her no kind of pass, girl, because I'm not in the business of giving passes. If I thought she was, you would tell you. In fact, I'm, I'm going to give you a better answer than that, Nina. How about stay tuned? I might ask her the same question. Okay? Stay tuned to the season. I, Because I take that term at its literal meaning, again, based off my academic study of the issue. Mm-hmm. Um, and at some point, I had to gain really complete clarity yeah. around all of my castmates, Lou and, and Ramona in particular, right? To make sure that their um, energy uh, in no way contributed to anything that felt racist, because then that gets yeah. in the way of an authentic friendship. So I get clarity on that. But what I do think Luann um, is dealing with mm. is a nature that says her instinct, I think, is to just be a bit competitive yeah. with women in general. Because I don't think this is... Uh, Jermaine to just me. I mean, I'm right. a Roni longtime fan. You you see her in competition with previous housewives. I'm not gonna name anybody that's not on the show currently, but y'all know if you've yes. watched, you know. If you've watched, you know. Um, and I think that knee jerk, intercompetitive nature in her comes from a, a pure place. I think she's one of six, I believe. There's just things. We all got shit, right? We all have shit in our childhood, our trauma, uh-huh. um, our experience that makes us show up as the adults that we show up as. Um, and I think that's the thing for Lou, is that for her to feel the most comfortable in a space, she needs complete assessment as to your value and her confidence that she outvalues you um, yeah. in, in, a, in a litany of categories, right? So whether it's yeah. looks, money, title, privilege, and the list goes on. So I yeah. think that's what's at play. And again, I do think because of probably several factors, my age, my newness to the platform, Probably also the fact that I'm a black woman and not just Luane Delaceps, honey. Nothing in society right. affirms a black woman's insistence on being seen mm-hmm. at, the, at the table. Yes. That, I know we're about to wrap up, Uh-oh. Uh, Nina, but hence the tagline, twice as hard for half as much, and now I'm coming for everything. Yeah. People forget the back part of the tagline, the, hard, the twice as much mm-hmm. for half as much. We, we know that. But pay attention yeah. to the back half. It's the I'm coming yes. for everything, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And we still have some time, girl. I don't have to leave yet. Do you have to leave? No, I got a couple more minutes, child. <laughs> we got a couple more minutes. Can I, I, can I keep? Can I keep? Can I keep yeah. you in more? Let's go. Let's go for ten okay. more. Yeah. Okay, because I, I got you know, you know, 
Girl, the journal thing. I took some notes. From... <laughs> Please, let's do it. Let's do I want to. I want to skip to to the the online stuff. Um, outside of what happened, because I know mm. it's hard. It's, it's like an ongoing thing when things happen to you, because these are people you still have to continuously deal with. Um, and I know you're taking a social media break. I, I, I my selfish part wants you on because there's so many people riding for you. So I do want you to see the love, you know, and it's so hard because when you're a public figure, I feel like it's easy to see the trolls, but there are so many people who are loving you and supporting you online. There's, there are so many tribes of people who are popping up and who don't even normally watch the show, who have been watching or who have been turned off that have come back because of you. So while I don't want to take you out of your place of peace, I do want to implore you to to take a second to take a look at some of those people because you are you are empowering so many women who did not feel seen by this franchise. And they are you're speaking in a way on the show that is just just lighting fires under so many people and making people look at the show differently. So just, you know, I know you need to take a break for your peace, but understand that you are being appreciated in, in, a, in a way. And, you know, sometimes I feel like you're set, you have to sacrifice yourself yeah. for the greater good. Yeah. And being, being, you know, in the line of fire is not easy, but are you, like, when do you think that you will come back to social media? Yeah, um, and I receive all of that, Nina, and it's powerful. And I do want to, uh, y'all to know, being the nerd that I am, I implore the system before I took my hiatus. So what I do is um, after each episode, I have um, my soror, my dear friend, Natalie, who y'all all met in the first episode. Remember the scene where I'm sitting on the bed talking about running from the repo man and all of that? <laughs> so my soror, Natalie, she goes on the social accounts and she screen grabs a, a, like a hand, a good handful, I would say maybe 10 to 20, really loving, positive. Oh, Okay, um, messages to give me affirmation and I read those over my morning coffee Wednesday morning so that's been okay. great you're, such, oh. you're just such a you're just such a Girl, I'll be right thinking I'll be just, thinking Nina. Just, I love it I just I love like they, uh, just go ahead and get I mean, the center space for next season okay <laughs> try to set me up now. um but uh, to answer your question directly i i think i'm gonna do one more week um of, again okay. and this is also it is for my piece primarily but also nina it's to extract myself from the um the platform so that people can really talk amongst themselves because this is important shit we're we're unpacking here yeah right um and i i went on the show in such part for this um, yes it hurts, it's heavy, my, you know, all that. Yeah. But if I'm here and these conversations aren't being had, uh, what am I What am I here for? You know, part. so so that's the other part of it, right? Is to, to, yeah. to people are like, when you come back, um, I'm, I'm probably going to come back, I'll tell you exactly when. Probably the Tuesday morning of next week's episode. I will probably return to social yeah. media. I will, okay. I will do a post and, you know, y'all watch tonight, because it's the more, some more that night. We're gonna let you, know? you get your weekend in, girl. We're gonna let you get some yeah. rest and relaxation. Yeah. And then you're yeah. gonna come back to us on this on all these platforms. Let me ask you a question. I, I was looking on social media last night and I was looking at, you know, I, I like to look at the good and the bad because it helps me kind of formulate what I wanna talk about. I saw someone in the comments say, Why do we need to address race on Bravo and specifically on Real Housewives when we're trying to get away from the troubles of the world? I don't come to Bravo to talk about things that are so heavy. What is your response to people who say, why do we need to be talking about things so heavy on Real Housewives? My honest response, Nina, is I understand that position. I I've actually been thinking about this critically and deeply, right? Um, I, I can make space for the argument that says, I watch Bravo Housewives reality TV for pure escapism um, to evade the heaviness of the real world. Now, I would probably argue it is called the real housewives of New York, right? That's a little snark. But here's what I would tell you. You got to take it up with Bravo. You got to take that concern. It is, I actually think it has some, some validity, right? Yeah. But you got to take that up with the network. Um, and the people that really maintain um, the direction of the show. 
because what I can assure you uh, is anybody at all familiar with my work and the network and everybody involved in the decisions around Roni are very familiar. It's a, it's a deep vetting process mm -hmm. before somebody gets an apple. And these are people that looked at my work, looked at my heart, and look at the very unapologetic way, Nina, yeah. in which I make it my life's work and business as a lawyer, as a journalist, uh, and as a podcaster, as everything that, as an author, right? Everything I do is unapologetically for the liberation of my people uh. and the liberation of people in marginalized groups across this country. That is who I am, and I will not be shamed around it. I will not apologize yeah. for it, and I will not put it on a back shelf for the sake of Roni. Amen. Um, so, and, and may I can, further say, can, can I just finish one little yeah. thing? Oh yes, please. I'm almost done. And, and so because that's who I am, plainly and clearly, now it is a network and Bravo heads of state decision to say, we want to incorporate that into this yeah. series. And we are, we think it has value to bring a woman with that level of consciousness into the space and we think it has value to have those conversations with this platform, with this cast. And is it going to turn off some viewers? Yes. Is it going to be, as Sonia Morgan said in her yeah. confessional interview last night, a bit awkward for some many, hell, maybe even all of us? Yes. But is it necessary for us to turn the page to first read the page? Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. The answer is yes. It's a resounding yes. yes. So. In conclusion, I make space for the argument that I don't watch Roni or Bravo for the real heavy shit. Yeah. Um, but I would submit in, in, in return to that, Nina, that's where we are as a nation right now. We in the heavy shit. And mm. you cannot put the toothpaste back into the tube, baby. At least you try. Y'all ever put, try to put some toothpaste back into the tube? It don't listen, work, listen. okay? It don't work. Listen. So now we have yeah. to continue to read the page and turn the page if we are to ever be in a place of national unity and healing and reconciliation. Yes. So Amen. It. Amen. Listen, let me tell you something. Anybody who wants to avoid heavy stuff on an entertainment network will want to avoid heavy stuff outside of it. Yeah. Uh, it and, and, and as Black women walk in these streets, we, we do not have the luxury of picking and choosing when we're discriminated against. Uh, you know, when we get microaggressions, we don't, we don't have that luxury. So yeah. if you feel uncomfortable watching Real Housewives of New York and why they're talking about all the black stuff, then maybe you are getting a small percentage of what it feels like to go into a space where you cannot avoid certain things, yeah. even if you want to, because that's yeah. how black women feel on a daily basis. So, yeah. uh, you know, I that that's my thought about the whole thing, but you know, yeah. that's just my opinion as a fan of the show. And, <laughs> it, has, and it has a lot of value, sis. Um, and before I go, I do want to clear up one thing because I, I, yes. I did, this is, this is light, so indulge me, Nina. A lot of people uh, were feeling a way about how long I took to get ready in glam yeah. before going to Luann's place, right? And I saw a lot of people, all kinds of people, all races, all genders, all sexual orientations, child. You were whack for taking too long in glam and you should have got your ass up earlier to be ready. I hear you. But what y'all don't know is I was up hella early to no fault of anybody's Ramona's electricity at her house, like most people's, could not handle two blow dryers, me and Leah both getting blown out at the same time. So we had no less than six power outages. So oh what God. normally takes, I'm not even exaggerating, girl. So what normally takes one and a half, two hours max, it was like a four hour process. Mm. Um, so it really wasn't me being whack and um, diva-ish um, as to say, I'll get there when I get there. Although I am grown. Um, I really did try to be considerate of the group and yeah. everyone's time and Ramona's home. Um, we just really did have some technical difficulties, but yeah. Yeah, well, I, you know, and I that, appreciate yeah. the behind the scenes because those little things sometimes people don't know. And especially you're in a, in a house trying to get ready, but let's not forget there's a crew there that's also using up electricity. So, and a lot, you know. and it was a lot. Like that's what I'm saying. I mean, not for nothing. Ramona's house is the shit, and it has pr pretty much the best electronical <laughs> electronic um, capacity as, as you can get. It was just yes. too much. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. One final question, and this is selfish, and I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I, I know I probably can't get the answer to this, but how are you feeling about you know coming back yeah. next season? 
it, uh, the most honest answer I can give you in this moment today is um, a lot of variables need to continue to play out, right? There's still more episodes to see. We still have a reunion to experience. Um, and then it, we know how this works, right? We can drop the fourth wall. Bravo first makes a decision to make an offer to invite a housewife back. They get to do that. Then I get to consider that offer Mm-hmm. in a way whether or not it makes sense um, for me personally and professionally. So a lot more variables have to reveal themselves in real time for me to even be able to really honestly answer okay. them. Okay. So yeah. it's still, it still a little too early to decide. Yeah, there's real things that have to play out in real time for honest consideration. That's that's the truth. Okay. okay. All right. Well, yeah. Ebony is going to take a little time off. She's going to be back hopefully next week on social media to talk to you guys. Uh, but I appreciate you kind of taking a little bit of time to just kind of shed some light and a little clarity on this. And, you know, we've, I'm glad that we were able to check in with you and just know that there are so many people who, you know, are supporting you and here for you and are happy to see you being just such an amazing representation of what a strong black woman is. And we, we are too, we are so happy. Thank you, sis. And if you ever want to pick up and move to the Big Apple, <laughs> I, I got space. Sis. Listen, you you have me on the friend on that show. It's gonna be quick earrings, all these things. Okay. I love you, sis, and I'm proud of you. I'm proud of your collection at Macy's. Thank I'm you. So proud. It's really like prolific. It's dope. Thank what you, you so you're, much. You're, thank you're, you. You're moving like the queen that you are, and I'm proud. Oh, of you. thank you so much. And we are gonna be watching. We appreciate you taking this time. Clarity is always amazing, and hopefully. These the conversations you have at the reunion will, will come to some clarity like this too. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you, Nina. All right, Bye. have a good one. Thanks Thank everybody you. for watching. Bye. Bye. And that was a great interview over there with Ebony K. Williams, Esquire, and Nina Parker. Shout out over there. That was a great interview. Ebony K. Williams, the first melanated goddess of New York. Real Housewives franchise, and she was talking about her issues with Luann De La Seps, who, for camera's sake, obviously apologized, but IRL, they ain't talked. And truth be told, she's going to have to wait for the reunion to know where she stands with a lot of these relationships, with Ramona and her white fragility, and Heather and her white splaining, and you know what? I'm just here for Ebony's Melanin. Leave a comment down below. What do you think about all of this? Are you thinking that Ebony's a great addition to this Housewife franchise? Were you wishing they left things alone? Are you here for the diversity? I'm sure you are. Anyway, leave a comment down below. Smash that like button. Smash that subscribe button. And I'll see you in the next video.